So I've actually been accustomed with Hargreaves Lansdowne for over five years now, I think it's nearly over six years, and it was the first investment platform that I started on, just from a recommendation from a friend at work. I remember him showing me some of his investments and saying, look what you can do with your money rather than keeping in the bank. And from that point onwards, I was hooked. It was the first investment platform that I use, and it still is the main investment platform that I have the majority of my investments in. I've got my stocks and shares ISA here. I've got my own SIPs, that's my self-invested pension plan. And then I've also got a general investment account too for the rest of my investments. At some point or another in the past, I've owned UK shares, US shares, managed funds, passive funds, you name it. I've earned dividends, I've saved monthly, I've invested lump sums, I've even migrated my pensions over here. So I think I've got quite a lot of experience in terms of how to use the platform, especially if you're just starting out. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the Hargreaves Lansdowne platform, explain who they are, etc walk you through how you can potentially choose the different investments on the platform, explain all the different kinds of accounts that we've just mentioned here, including your self-invested pension plan, your stocks and shares ISA, and also your general investment account. Really importantly, then I'll discuss fees and how much money you're going to end up paying this platform. And then I'll give you my opinion of who I think this platform could be for. And as a beginner investor, for example, where you might best put your money. Anyway, with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So let's just make sure we know who we're talking about here. So Hargreaves Lansdowne are the largest broker in the UK. They claim to be the largest personal investing platform in the UK with over 1 million users currently. They're also a publicly listed company too on the London Stock Exchange. They've got a market cap of around £7 billion and their share price at the moment is around £14.50 or in normal speak, 1,450 pence. As you'd expect with any major platform, they are regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. And of course, all your investments are protected under that financial services compensation scheme, which does protect your investments up to the value of £85,000. So you've always got that reassurance there that they are a nice, big, trusted household name. You can access Hargreaves Lansdowne from both their website at hl.co.uk, but they've also got a mobile app too, which I use on a daily basis. So you've always got that flexibility there, whether you're at home or out and about. I've got to admit that I am one of those people that check my investments multiple times a day, and I've really got into a bad habit of doing it, even over the many years that I've been investing now. It's just one thing I do in the morning now when I pick my phone up and just have a little look. I'm always interested when the UK market's open just to see what's happening. And then later on in the afternoon when the US market's open, just seeing what happens with the markets. I love seeing those blue numbers when things go up and of course I pretend those red days don't exist either way try and avoid getting into the habit but I think it's stuck with me now so regardless I'm in it for the long run but I still like looking every day so this platform offers several different account types as we mentioned earlier but of course all of those account types are held in a one single overall account so you will just have one overall account and then with inside that of course you can have your general investment account you can have your self-invested pension plan and you can have your stocks and shares ISA and they're labeled differently and managed separately, but they are under a single umbrella. There's absolutely no charge at all to open up accounts on Hargreaves Lansdowne, which is really nice. All the fees, which we'll talk about earlier, are really to do with what investments you choose, what you invest in, and how much money you've got on the platform. Remember, as a quick reminder, the stocks and shares ISO is something that's open to every single adult in the UK, and you can invest up to £20,000 per year tax-free. And I'd strongly recommend and say, get this as your first kind of port of call if you're starting investing today, especially if you're putting in quite a little bit of money, then go for the stocks and shares ISA first and build out on that. And once you've maxed that out to 20K a year, then feel free to open a general investment account. But remember that, that any gains in there, if you sell a stock, for example, in that general investment account, will end up being taxed. And then finally, just a note on the SIP account. So that's your self-invested pension plan. So what I've done and what you can do is if you've got old pensions sat with different employers, who might put them with Aviva or Scottish Widows or someone like that, just check those statements every time you come through your door. A self-invested pension plan means that I'm able to take that money and invest it in the way I choose, but I can't just sell it and take the money out. That money is locked in until I'm 55 years old, but I can choose to invest it in what I like and what I've actually chosen my pension to be invested in. It's just a tracker of the pretty much the S&P 500. Anyway, I won't go into too much detail in this video about pensions, but it's always good to try and know where they are where they're invested with. And in my personal opinion, I wanted to have them all in a single place so I could manage them and choose my investments. There's nothing worse than knowing that I'm on some default plan with Aviva where it's got really not much risk and high fees and potentially it's not going to grow as fast as I could make it. So it's best to take control. And the final account, which I did just talk about there is your general investment account. So you'll see this on other different platforms as well. Sometimes it's shortened down to GIA or something like that pretty much is just your unlimited place to buy and sell stocks and shares as you please 
but of course any gains in that account are technically taxable events. So you will have to declare those in any self-assessment form or let the tax authorities know. So I'm sure if you make 100k on some crazy bet that Lizzie's tax crew will come after you, so just be careful. So one of the best things about Hargreaves Lansdowne in my opinion is of course their different choice and selection of investments. So that's everything from individual stocks and shares, from UK, Europe, US, emerging markets, etc. And then of course all the access you've got to different mutual funds, different investment funds, different ETFs, etc. from all around the world, including REITs, bonds, you name it. Remember on this platform as an investor, they can't offer any financial advice in the same ways I can't offer any financial advice. They just give you all the information and then from there, it's up to you to completely do it yourself. So they'll give you as much guidance as they can and give you all the information, but really it's up to you when you're putting your portfolio together to fully understand what you're doing. So I'll take this opportunity to say, please do plenty of your own research, read all the documentation, fully understand what you're getting yourself into. But I do believe this platform gives you most of that information, all the information that you could need to be able to make solid decisions. One little useful tip and a tool that I previously used, especially when I started investing, was what they call their portfolio plus section. In the same way as you would tell a robo investor, like Nutmeg or Moneybox, for example, you would say, I've got £10,000 I want to invest and I want to invest maybe a couple of hundred pounds a month. And here's how adventurous I am, for example, I'm quite cautious or I'm quite risky. They will then build out a portfolio for you and choose four, five or six different funds and enable you to pretty much say, invest in those and it will spread that money across those in the way that they think matches up to what you've just told the platform. This was actually one of the first things that I did when I started investing, because of course, when you see all these fund names and you see all these funds, you have no idea really what you're doing, but I know I wanted to be invested. So I did actually use this initially. I've since sold out many years ago, but this could be a useful tool for you. Again, please do all your own research on that one. So the big question on your lips right now is how much does all of this cost? So the key thing is now really is understanding about fees and how much this all costs you, because at the moment you're like a kid in a candy store. You want to get started. You see your favorite stocks, you want to buy them but you really need to understand how much is going to cost you ongoing day to day. Remember with fees in trading, although they sound like very small amounts, typically below 1% and these very small numbers, over years and years and years, if you're a long-term investor like me, fees add up significantly. And if you think about your pension pot, if you think about large numbers and large amounts of cash, like hundreds of thousands of pounds, then you can really start to impact what you can return in your old age. So Hargreaves lands down charge in a couple of different ways. And the main ways they make money are through an account fee, which is based on how much money you've got in the account. But they also charge based on what is inside of that account. And of course, you've got the ongoing charges based on the funds you're invested in. And then of course, you've got fees for trading individual stocks and shares too. So I'm going to run through these as best as I can now. Do remember, of course, that from the time I record this video, they could change and do whatever they want. So please check their website the latest information it is all transparent and up to date on their website and of course that will be the best place to go for information so let's start with the stocks and shares isa now i'll pop all the fees up on screen right now so as we can see here if you invest in funds then you'll be charged a 0.45 percent fee up to 250,000, and then it's a sliding scale to 2 million pound plus if you're lucky enough to have that kind of investment level so it's just like income tax in a way so you will always pay that 0.45 percent up to 250k and of course, it's a sliding scale from there. So nice if you've got that kind of money. If you choose to invest in individual stocks, you'll still pay 0.45%. But luckily, as you can see on the screen, it is capped at £45 a year, which is very cheap indeed. But however, that doesn't mean you get away with investing super cheaply. You'd still have to pay to buy those stocks. But I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. There's a really useful example on their website to try and make sense of what I've just said there. I'll put this on screen now and we'll just talk through it. So in this example, we've got a £15,000 investment and it's split between some funds and shares. And this example gives us a cost of 90 pounds a year in total for our investment management, which is a cost of around seven pound 50 a month. Yes, potentially there are places to get that cheaper, but it's not too bad in the long scheme of things, but it does reflect how things can add up quite quickly, times that 90 pounds a year, for example, by 10, 20, 30 years, and those costs start adding up. Remember, fees come out of your account every single month, and it is vitally important to have some cash inside each of the different account types. If you don't have cash on hand, Hargreaves Lansdowne will sell your investments. Let me just say this again. If you don't have cash in your account, Hargreaves Lansdowne will sell your investments to pay for your account fees. So please make sure you've got some cash on the side to pay for those account fees each month. I'm not yet aware that you can set up a separate direct debit or anything like that to pay for their account fees. So please make sure you do that. 
otherwise it'll just eat into your investments and it'll be rubbish. So SIP accounts have exactly the same fees as we've just discussed, we don't need to touch on them, but we do need to touch on general investment accounts. So with these, there's actually no fee at all for holding individual shares, but they do charge for holding funds. But as we did just mention, and something I said I would cover, is we do need to talk about what fees are involved when we're actually buying these shares. Because it sounds great saying I can have a platform where I can hold my shares for free, but what does it cost to actually get myself into those shares in the first place? So for example, with any UK shares, you will have stamp duty to pay, which is 0.5% of the value of the trade. And then you'll also have from Hargreaves Lansdowne a trading fee. So for your first set of trades, it will be £11.95 per trade. Of course, that is very, very expensive indeed, especially if you're going to be trading with a smaller amount. So as you can imagine with a fixed amount, you're buying a million pounds worth of stock, £11.95 doesn't seem so expensive. But of course, if you're just putting in a £50 or £100 and £11.95 is your trading fee, that's a huge chunk of change there. And of course, you'll have to try and make that up in gains to cover it. So I'll put this on screen now just to show how their sliding scale works. But effectively, you can trade a little bit cheaper on Hargreaves Lansdowne if you are a frequent trader. But as long term investors, we do know the harm in trading a lot and trying to change our positions and it ends up costing you a lot more in the long run. So quite often history has taught us to stick with our current investments rather than try and chop and change and time the market. Remember that trading fees apply both when buying and selling, unfortunately. So you can't get away even when you sell your shares as well. You're going to have to pay that fee too. And then one more fee and one more complex fee, of course, is the exchange rate too. So if you're a fan like me of those large American stocks, you are going to have to pay an exchange rate fee on top of that trading fee as well. And that's currently charged at 1% above the current exchange rate. That 1% is on the first £5,000 worth of trade. So again, if you're playing with relatively small amounts of money here and trying to buy a US share, it can cost you a lot of money in fees. And again, that's going to take you a long, long time to get those returns to potentially cover that initial cost. So just be aware of that one. So let me just say, if it's not already clear, this platform for very small accounts and very low amounts of money is probably not the most effective. And although it is very, very easy to use and gives you access to a wide range of investments, if you are playing around with maybe maybe a few hundred pounds or, or maybe just a few thousand pounds on the lower end, then potentially it can cost you a lot of money. My personal recommendation, my opinion only, please do all your own research, would be to use maybe one of the newer commission-free platforms, for example, companies like Free Trade, companies maybe like Trading212 if you can actually open an account yet and trade there commission-free just to get yourself started to understand how things work. But otherwise, I wouldn't recommend this really to people with relatively small amounts of money and you really need to be in the kind of tens, potentially working your way up to the six figures to make sure those fees don't impact you too much. So there's some great tools on their website and one I'll highlight now is one that helps you actually choose investments, specifically around choosing different funds. And of course, funds are a great way and a great investment to get into investing because they're a collection of stocks. So rather than having to buy 100 individual stocks and go for all the charges and the pain of trying to put that together, a fund gives you access to all of those different things in a separate index, a separate section of the market, for example, they're a really, really nice way and really nice way to get into investing. So if you just go into a fund or a stock, for example, and you go to charts of performance, you can add a chart and then go ahead and make a selection. So what's really useful is if you just pick a random fund, for example, on their website, and then you go to the charts of performance section, you can of course see what the performance of the stock has done over the last five years, which of course is not necessarily an indication of what's gonna happen in the next five years, but can give you a good benchmark and give you a good understanding of potential volatility, for example, like that. Now, what you can do and what's really interesting that I've used previously before is on that stock chart of your favorite fund, you can compare it to different benchmarks like the S&P 500, for example. So all you'd need to do is go down to the bottom there, choose index, choose the S&P 500, and it will plot on that graph and it will give you a good understanding of potentially what the last returns have been for the last five years to take that into consideration as just one pointer of doing your own research. Most useful too, you can also sort different funds into different categories because if you go to the fund section and just choose all funds, you're looking at over 3,700 different funds. So, so I don't know about you, but that's too many funds to choose from. Even if we looked at 10 funds a day, we wouldn't even get through them in a year. So there's a couple of different tools here. Hargreaves Lansdowne have their own what they call the wealth shortlist, which are ones that they've handpicked out these can be very popular ones or ones that have grown very well over the last few years. Have a look through these. That whittles your fund selection down to 120. So again, do all your own research, but there might be some gems in there which you can have a look at and add to a well-rounded balanced portfolio. On the complete other end of the scale, if you want the absolute lowest cost passive index funds, which I'm a huge fan of and most people should have as a core part of their investing portfolio, 
then what I would do is do the following now and I've put this on the screen. All you need to do is go to the fund finder. You would choose accumulation and unit type, choose fund type tracker, and then that will give you 111 to choose from. And these are the ones that are gonna be passively managed rather than actively managed. And then of course, if you want to whittle that down further, you could potentially choose the 14 results of the wealth shortlist, which you'll see on screen now. And one of my personal favorites on the platform, just for a low cost index tracker of pretty much the S&P 500 and the large cap American market, is the Legal and General US Index Fund. This is one I've got in multiple positions and one my SIP is completely invested into at the moment. And you can see it's got nice and low fees of 0.06% and it's quite a low amount of money to actually get yourself into this fund as well. There's no massive minimum payment, for example. Okay, so we've covered a lot in this video and I'm going to do lots of more videos on Hargreaves Lansdowne because I don't think there's a huge amount of content on UK YouTube at the moment. If you agree with that, please do let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If it's the largest personal investment broker in the UK, yet almost no one's really talking about it or going in depth on it, there's got to be something there, right? Anyway, in this section, I'm going to go through some of my pros and cons on the platform just to give you an understanding and just to give you some of the information you might need to be able to make a positive decision yourself. But let me run through now all of my pros and cons that I've got written down here. So firstly, as I've mentioned before in my pros, I really like the mobile application. It's highly secure, allows me to use Face ID, and of course, the web platform is really good too. And that's really important for me in terms of having an experience of an investment platform that I can see my investments whenever I want, when I wake up in the morning after checking some social media platforms and I can jump on my investment straight away. That's always reassuring and nice to have. Secondly, as mentioned before, the choice of investments really is wide ranging and not every investment platform is born equal. Not everyone will give you access to some of the different funds there are out there and not everyone will give you access to some of the shares that are out there. Just for example, if we contrast this with Vanguard, which is a fantastic low cost index fund investing platform, you go on their website, all you have access to is their own funds and no individual shares. So you've got to balance those things out. And of course, everything like that comes with a cost. Thirdly, I think the amount of information on the platform is really, really powerful. And you don't even need an account to access all of it. It's all publicly available. You can go into their own research section. You can go into the funds, provides all the information on the different shares, going through their financials. Everything, in my opinion, is really, really clear. And even as a beginner investor, I think you'd be quite clear and quite have a quite a good understanding of the different shares and different funds so you can have all the information you need. And finally, although not bottom of my list, probably something that is one of the most important things and maybe one of the most overlooked things is that Hargreaves Lansdowne are a major trusted company and being a public company in the UK too means they're a bit more stringent and strict on their regulations and their financial duties as well. Having a platform and having an investment platform, in my opinion, that's extremely well trusted, large and well established is really, really important. And although I know with that £85,000 financial compensation scheme, if I do go with a smaller broker, for example, or one of the new disruptive brokers who I am a big fan of disrupting that market, if those brokers would have failed and it would take us many months and maybe a year to get our money back, that would be time out of the market. So in my opinion, having your money with a really well trusted platform is something that is really important to me. Now on the negative side, we've already touched on this, so we'll jump straight into this. Firstly, of course, on the share dealing side, there's no getting away from that, that their fees are relatively expensive in this industry. Having to pay £11.95 for the courtesy of just making a single trade means that your trading can add up very, very expensive, especially if you are a frequent trader or you are looking to make small positions into different stocks, especially in the US as well. So the only advice, of course, I would give here is making sure that if you are going to use Hargreaves Lansdowne as a platform to trade individual shares, that you would try and save up a larger amount of money to do that. Otherwise, £11.95 is a lot of money. And of course, then the exchange rate fees, having to charge 1% to change your money back into pounds and dollars. And of course, you've got that exchange going both ways. Again, eats into your investment. And if you want to buy US shares for a very low cost, you might want to try a platform like Stake, for example. And these guys do a low cost fee of 0.5%. Got a link in the description below. Got a bit of money in there at the moment. Might be worth having a look if you like to speculate on some US stocks. And then, of course, another fee, the 0.45% account fee can also add up. Again, it's not going to be the most expensive on the market, but if you compare it to people like Vanguard who charge 0.15%, or then of course the commission free brokers like Free Trade and Trading212 who charge absolutely nothing, then of course everything's going to seem more expensive than that. Really, to me, is a balancing act between 
what you want to pay for and the services that you value, whether you think it's an expensive platform or not. So what do we think? Well, I've been a customer for many years. And of course, as my first brokerage platform was my first serious investment platform, I kind of have a little bit of loyalty here and I have stuck with them through thick and thin. As I mentioned before, I think brand is really, really important and trust is extremely important in this sector, especially when you're talking about tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of investment in my case, when I wanna move my money around, making sure that I've got a trusted place to put my money is extremely important. I think Hargreaves Lansdowne ticks that box massively for me. I think of course the choice is great of the different stocks and shares and funds are available. Um, customer service is great when I have to use them from a limited perspective. I found it really easy to transfer my pensions into them too. It's just all done online. Really, really nice and simple too. So I think if you're more of an experienced investor and you want access to those more niche or different shares, different stocks, for example, different REITs, you might not be able to get access to on some other free platforms, then Hargreaves Lansdowne could be a good place for you. And especially if you've got more money too, because of course that will help reduce those costs. But I think for newer people, if you wanted to play around with a platform, I don't think Hargreaves Lansdowne probably is the best place for you. And if you were just starting around with a relatively small amount of money, maybe a few hundred pounds or even a just very low thousands, then I would probably, in my opinion, is choose a different platform just to get yourself understanding of how to trade stocks and shares, maybe choose one of the free platforms. And then of course, as you progress and maybe as you want to then choose a, a more trusted brand, you would potentially use Hargreaves Lansdowne for that. Otherwise, it would be hard to recommend them for a smaller investor in a small sized account. And if you want nothing to do with actively managed funds and individual stocks and shares, a platform like Vanguard could be a really good place for you too. So I'm personally building out my stocks and shares platform on the Vanguard platform because I know that the fees are extremely low and it's what I want really from a passive investment perspective to let that money just grow in that account with really, really low fees. So in summary, it's a good platform, pretty pricey. Just be careful if you're a newer investor, it might not be the best place for you. I will probably be keeping most of my investments here in the short term at least. I will be opening, as I've mentioned before, my stocks and shares ISA. I've already opened my stocks and shares ISA with Vanguard and I'm just building that out now at the moment, but I will keep my existing stocks and shares ISA in the Hargreaves Lansdowne platform for the time being, probably, until I slowly move that out and just kind of clean up my investments at the moment, which seem like they're a little bit all over the place as I've kind of progressed from that beginner many years ago. And I'm probably gonna consolidate massively into lower cost index funds because I do have a bit of weighting in individual stocks, which have done really, really well. But over time, I do want to move to that more passive approach, which ultimately beats most active approaches 90 plus percent of the time in the long run. Anyway, I really hope you found the video useful. If you did, please drop me a like, subscribe for more. See you in the next one. But any comments at all, let me know down below. If you think I've missed anything, for example, please do let me know. Anyway, see you in the next one.